JavaScript canvas or the canvas element in HTML, uh, we're going to see how to draw pretty graphics. So the canvas element uh, is like that canvas. Here's the MDN tutorial and uh, you know you can go through it and I'll tell you. The first thing you need is an actual canvas element. So here's our page. Uh, here is the source code for that page. There is no canvas element there. Now there isn't. And uh, so I'm going to add one. I'm going to give it an ID of, uh, let's say, board. And I'm also going to give it a width of, say, 600 and a height of 200. These are pixels. And then when I reload the page, uh, well, nothing happens. It's there, you just can't see it. So let's so you can see it. I'm gonna give it a border style equals border uh, one pixel uh, solid border of one pixel. Save, reload, and there now we can see there's a little border around the canvas. So the canvas is this area. It's basically you know it's a bit mapped uh, area where you can actually change individual pixels if you choose so uh, with your JavaScript code. So the first thing you have to do in order to draw in this area, let's go back to our code, is uh, so here's our canvas element, we put that in. Now we need to go to our code that is loaded and uh, in our document ready, we're going to grab a hold or the canvas. So you know, for this demo, I'm gonna create a global variable called canvas and another one called ctx for the context I'll show you so I'm, when once the document is loaded I can set canvas equals and I'm gonna grab uh, if you remember I gave it an ID of board so I'm gonna grab that guy board and uh, grab the first one because that's gonna return everything and then I'm going to say my CTX is going to be canvas.getContext2D, right? And if you go back to the tutorial there, um, it will show you that that is what we need to do, right? So we got the canvas on uh, element. And then we get the context. So the context is where we're actually going to be drawing, right? So this is the DOM element. Canvas is the DOM element. The context is the thing that we can draw on. There's only right now, really only 2D is supported. There's eventually there will be a 3D context that you can use. So that's that. Let's see if this works. Um, I want to go over here and reload that. And now uh, for my Chrome tools, and let's see, CTX is my canvas rendering context. So we got it. Is there? Um, so what can we do with that guy? Uh, CTX dot. Once you got it, you can uh, draw. Easy to draw, and let's go. I'll show you how to do that. So we can draw shapes. Uh, now, first of all. The coordinates are that the zero zero is in the top left, and they go positive and positive down, right? So y gets uh, bigger as it goes down, and uh, you really have only one shape, which is a rectangle. Uh, so at least built in, and uh, so you can do that. You can say fill rectangle, stroke rectangle, and creel rectangle. And here is you know how you do it. You get the context, and then you say I want to a field rectangle, a field rectangle at x, y, width, and height. So we can do that. Say I want a field rectangle at, you know, 10, 10, 10, uh, or let's say 20, 30, width, and height. And there it is. You can see it appeared. You know, by default, the color is black, but then, of course, you, obviously, you can change that to whatever color you want. Um, so you have the fill rectangle, uh, the clear rectangle is, uh, it's clear, it actually clears the pixels and uh, this is very useful because it's also the way that we can clear the whole canvas. So we can say ctx dot clear rectangle 0 comma 0 starting at xy 0 0 and then the whole width and height which in this case is canvas dot width 
and canvas dot height. So if I do that, that will clear the whole thing of any drawing that I might have made. Um, so that's a rectangle. And then um, if you want to do other shapes, then you have to draw a path, right? So to draw a path, you first you begin the path, uh, then uh, you do a move to, and then you can do various line twos or arcs twos, or sorry, arcs. And then at the end, you close that. So let's do that. Uh, we start with, you have to say ctx.beginPath and then ctx.move to, whatever you want to move to. Let's say I want to move to 10, comma 10. You know, nothing happens yet, uh, but the things are getting stored. ctx, line, line 2. So we are 10, 10. Let's say I want a line to, I don't know, 200. 10 and then from there I want to go to 250 and from then I want to go to 150 and from then I want to go to 0 and 50. So you see nothing's been drawn yet uh, but those things have been stored and uh, now I want to close the path. Right. And I uh, close the path, still nothing gets done, but I have to then decide, do I want to fill that area or do I want to stroke, right? So fill will try to close the path, fill in the path with the color, or stroke will just draw the line. So I want to, let's say, just draw the, the lines themselves. So I'm going to do stroke, and now it appeared, you see, whatever shape I did. And uh, that's how you draw. And uh, that's all you got. So anything, if you want more complex shapes, you can have to build them yourself using all these move commands. And of course, you create your own uh, functions to do circles and squares and whatever you need. And you know, of course, if you Google, you'll find tons of different uh, libraries out there for helping you draw shapes. Uh, you can also use images, right? So to you know, like an image, like a photo you want to put into your canvas you can do that and the way you do it is as follows first you have to create the new image you said a source attribute to be the URL of your image and uh, and that's it right. so let's say I'm gonna create an image IMG equals a new image Right. And then I said a source attribute, you know, this is just a variable, it could be called whatever, I just called it IMG. So the source attribute is going to be that URL, which I know is an image. And then I'm going to say context draw image, and then I can give it the X and Y coordinates of where I want the image to start. Um, and also the width and height, so 40, 40. So um, and uh, of course I gotta give it the actual image itself uh, that's the first argument image IMG and there it is that's a tiny little picture if I want to draw it bigger you know I can stretch it let's say uh, 100 by oops 100 by 100 so it's bigger and then I can uh, draw it again and you know start that 10 10 so you see it does that and I can start at whatever 30 30 I get it over there and you see each time it's gonna draw the image at that point and uh, you know you can't you cannot erase anything right so once something gets drawn like this image I cannot erase the image you know there is no like undo there's no sprites, there's no movement. You have to do all that by yourself. All you have is, uh, you can do is erase the whole thing, right? So you can either erase the whole thing, the whole rectangle as I'm doing here, or you know, I can erase a particular rectangle. But I have to do all that by hand. I gotta figure out, you know, I wanna erase this rectangle if I wanted to do that. Generally, you know, for a lot of applications, it's just easier to erase everything so if you're going to do an animation you know you erase everything you draw everything again you erase everything you draw everything again that actually works quite well uh you know 
but then unless you have a lot a lot of moving things and you have to experiment with that and with the various browsers but it's, it's really speedy um, you know you, I've seen demos with hundreds of things moving with just that erasing and drawing and they look fine um, Okay, one last thing is uh, it's not here, right? But it, on the event handler. So let's say you wanted, you know, you I did my image. I have an image there. Uh, I wanted to handle events like I do on a standard HTML page. Well, uh, you can like there is this image here. You know, you cannot bind events to images. You cannot bind events to rectangles or anything in there. The only thing you can bind an event two is the canvas itself, right? So, but you can, uh, uh, the event will give you the X and Y coordinates of the mouse uh, with respect to the canvas. So let's do that. I'm gonna have to go back to my code here. So I have my canvas element and uh, I'm gonna write first my function handler. So handle, uh, you know, click event here uh, uh, user clicked uh, console.log and I'm gonna log out the event itself and then uh, I have my uh, my canvas elm well uh, do it this way uh, board is my canvas element so on let's say mouse let's say on a mouse down down if I can do that on a mouse down I'm gonna call the handle click event handler um, actually let's do the mouse move so you can see the various moves um, so I think that should work so reload and uh, you see, as I'm moving the mouse, I get all those events. And uh, you can see down here, I'm printing out the event itself. The event does tell me uh, the X coordinate, the page X, uh, which is not the one I want. I want the offset X. And the offset Y are the X and Y coordinate of where that mouse was with respect to the canvas. Uh, so I had an X. The X and Y location. So that's what I get, right? So I have that. I can tie an event handler to the canvas, and then I can look at the offset X and offset Y, which will tell me exactly where the user, um, in this case, moved to um, the, the pixels. And then I have to do all the other stuff myself, right? So then I have to figure out, you know, if the user was over this area, and there was an image there, I got, I got to do that by hand. Uh, but that's, that's the way it is. So that's the canvas, and uh, you can you know go through the tutorial, and you can see there's also transformations you can do with images and with the whole canvas itself. Uh, and composing, you can put stuff up and down. And here's a little tutorial on doing a basic animation. Uh, so he says you know basically what you gotta do is clear the canvas, save the canvas, save, draw it, and then restore the canvas. Sort of the standard animation loop of. Erase everything, draw everything again.